All right, hey everybody. Uh, this time we're gonna do things a little bit differently. I've got a special guest joining me for a live cast. Yeah, that's right, coming at you live. So expect three hours of a lot of downtime. Joining with me is a very special guest from the Coolant Pod. Introduce yourself. Hi everybody, it's Rick, call sign Nitro. And we are gonna be watching Mech Warrior Lincoln take on Rental in the fourth round of Purple Highlands, if I'm not mistaken. And I can see why they call it Purple Highlands. There's Purple Hills, there's Purple on the Objectives, which is from the, I think, the f Alien Worlds tile set. It's really interesting. Mm. I'm curious to see. I'm not even entirely sure how this mission works. We're going to have to pull this up. I like the symmetry for sure. Yeah, so how are you doing in Purple Highlands right now, Nitro? I'm currently, I think, one and two or two and one, something like that. I unfortunately was not able to join in time. Oh, that's uh, right. yeah. I found out like a day or two before, and then I was busy and I couldn't. Uh, I just couldn't come up with a list. I wasn't. I was so undecided that I was just. Ah. Nah, that's understandable. Real life comes first. Okay, this looks like it's either east-west or corner deployment, from the looks of it. Uh, this is week four, right? Correct. Uh, this is called Hot Spots. Oh, there it is. The high roller chooses west or east side. The other player selects the opposite side. Players may deploy anywhere within the standard 3-hex deployment zone. Okay, scoring plus five VP per hotspot you control per turn. Control a hotspot by having more units inside the hotspot than your opponent. If both players have an equal amount of units within a hotspot, then it is a tie and no one will receive points. Crippled, unconscious, and immobile may not contest objectives. Battle armor slash infantry must be dismounted to contest objectives. And those are those six purple, uh, seven clusters of around the center i'm pretty sure that you see there yeah six spots scattered along the map they are all dormant now each round a player will, will roll 1d6 to see which spot goes hot in the first round there should be no hot spots each round one through five players will roll 1d6 so that a new hot spot goes hot spots will activate at the end of the turn uh before oh wow so the first spot will go hot during the end phase of the first round and the second Round one spot will be hot. Uh, okay, third round, two spots, etc. Until the sixth round, we'll have five spots. And you stop rolling the d6 because these five spots will stay active until the end of turn seven, at which point all will return to being cold. And in turn eight, you start the process all over again. Gotcha. So that makes sense all right please refer to the table below on how many spots should be active in each round okay we have a table here's the map and yeah i'm assuming it's one at the top and then going clockwise for locations we're probably going to see them roll in the chat box below here in a little bit or at the end of the round i guess that explains um you know what that explains that explains rentals uh, list i see it now i see why he chose many of the units that he chose this is gonna be interesting Yeah, speaking of lists, uh, while we're in the early phases of the game, we got some downtime because there's usually not a lot of action in the first couple turns. And this is a very big map, so I don't expect there to be a lot of action for the first like three to four turns at this rate. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at Mech Warrior Lincoln's list. I'm actually familiar with this to an extent because I did play him in one of the previous rounds and barely was able to squeak out a lucky win due to some RNG going in my favor. 
since he's only got three mechs on the board right now, let's go ahead and take a look at the C3 nonsense he's got going on at the Naginata. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I know that C3 is your specialty. Uh, so let's pull it up here. It's a 4-5, uh, 3-5 movement profile, 240 out of 240 armor. So completely armored. This thing is a brick house. He's got an ERP PC and three LRM 15s. Uh, I foresee this C3 network getting put to good use on this big wide open map. One second. Any thoughts on the Naginata there, uh, Nitro? You're a C3 uh, specialist, as we as we all know. I think he constructed this rather well. Um, the Naginata being the backfield, the Mauler that is hooked up to the Naginata being a midfielder, and the Phoenix Hawk 8CS being the one that goes in and spots for the rest of the network. Being the type of jumper that it is... One second... Yeah, definitely. Being the jumper that it is, 7-11-6, and it can also run if it cho so chooses. Yeah, definitely put to well good use. Wait, what's a 7-11-6? Whoa, hang on, hang on. Hey, hey, Pirates back. We are currently live casting a Purple Highlands round four match between Mech Warrior Lincoln and Rental. Yeah, the Phoenix Hawk 8CS, it reads right now movement of 7.11.6, downgraded to 6.96. I don't know why, but it's saying downgraded, so I don't know. Oh, it's transporting some battle armor. Mag clamps, perhaps? Yep, that's what it has to be. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely got magnetic battle armor. Uh, I recall those from last round. Uh, but yeah, that Phoenix Hawk is going to be a nasty little spotter for him. Uh, it was really annoying to shoot down in the round I played against him. Well, once he drops off that battle armor, it will definitely be able to zoom around the battlefield a lot better. Yeah, one thing to note, because he does have those mag clamps on, he's down to a 696 for the time being. Uh, and he is max armor, 136, so, I mean, he probably is just going to do a flat run for 9, as it stands now. He might actually be able to make it onto that first little hot spot in this area. You know, but I admire that. I admire that a lot. You know why? Because the battle armor, that, that Phoenix Hawk is 711.6, but any other phoenix hawk is 696 it's very rare that you find a phoenix hawk that deviates from that formula so he basically brought the phoenix hawk with that battle armor mac clamp down to what a quote-unquote regular phoenix hawk would be so he's not really losing anything no and you know what uh he's got two snub nose ppcs as his only armament and he's got 28 heat sinks, so he's going to be completely neutral, jumping for 6 or running for 11 every single turn. And running might be the way to go, considering how big this map is. His panther and crab are there mostly to be the flankers, to close the door on anything that tries to, that wanders into a trap or decides to get surrounded. Yeah, while we're at it, let's go ahead and finish out the C3 network and take a look at that Mauler. So another 2,141 battle value here for the Mauler 3R. Uh, this is obviously got a C3 because it's in the network. It's 279 out of 279 armor. Ooh, that's a beefy boy. And he's only a 353 movement profile. So not getting across the map in a hurry, but he's going to get somewhere and just set up shop once he gets to that point, I'm pretty sure, within the next turn or two. It does carry an Excel engine, but you know what? With armor and the side torsos of 28, at this point, who cares? Yeah, good, <laughs> cares? good luck, buddy. <laughs> You're going to have to go through the rear if you want an easy kill, even with its XL engine. And it 
does have two LB10Xs, one in each arm, and two LRM15s, one in each side torso. So even if you do get behind him, you're still going to get shotgunned by an LB10. So that rounds out his C3 portion of the list. Rounding out his list is a panther and a crab. Let's go ahead and take a look at the panther, because this is arguably one of the more interesting mechs on this list. So it's a 35 tonner. 464 movement profile. He does have a supercharger, so he can run up to 8. So 484 movement profile if he decides to activate it. Now, it doesn't look like he did this turn because he only ran for 5. Actually, probably liked that a lot. It. Yeah, he probably activated it last turn. And it's got ballistic reinforced armor. Uh, 119 points of it uh, maxed out for its tonnage. That's interesting. You don't see that too often. No, you don't. And it does have an Intersphere ERPPC and a Clan Streak SRM4, so not too shabby. Too bad it's not the other way around with the Clan ERPPC. <laughs> well, this Panther is Draconis Combine exclusive. Comes around in the Dark Age into the Ill Clan. Okay, 1291, 1291 battle value stock. Huh. Oh, and it's completely neutral. It can run, uh, shoot everything, and be right at 20. And that makes sense as a Karedan mech with a Ballistic Reinforced always getting shot at by those uh, Davians with their auto cannons. Yes. Yes. That makes total sense. Lore-wise, that makes total sense. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and he's looks like he's going to swing to the north with that Panther. And the Crab is actually looks like he's going to swing to the south. To enclose in some fashion. Envelop. Well, this crab is the 54. Crab dash 54. Movement profile of 711, actually 714. I'm imagining it's because it has some sort. Yep, it has a supercharger along with double plasma rifles, an ER medium and an ER small. Wow. Armor coverage is rather decent for its size 17 on the side torsos, 22 in the legs. And it has. A double XL engine? Yeah, so I think that generates five heat a turn, if I'm not mistaken. Or extra heat for each movement you do. Uh, like running is more and jumping is more. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head. You don't see the double XL too often. Yeah, for every time, I think it's for every hex that it covers beyond a certain limit, it generates extra heat. Or no, maybe it's just an extra heat period on how many tiles, how many hexes it covers. Yeah, we'll or how to, many movement points it uses. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on his heat levels and which weapons he's firing, just so we can figure this out as we go along, instead of, you know, looking up the rules. Why would we do that? But yeah, this is very <laughs> well armored, 158 out of 158 on a 50 tonner. So almost all of his mechs, I think actually all of them are, completely fully armored. No skimping on the defensive battle value there. This is why I love Karedans. Their yeah. choice of units is pretty balanced, in my opinion. Yeah, a lot of solid mechs here. Um, he's, he's got a really solid list. The Mauler is basically going to prop itself into this objective uh, on his side, on the west end of the map, on the south. The Naginata's propped in the north end, and they're probably just going to stay there for the rest of the map, lobbing, range, uh, lobbing fire down range with the C3 network. If that Phoenix Hawk gets in range for uh, to give data back to anything, I mean, as it stands now, he, the Phoenix Hawk's already like eight or nine hexes closer, or maybe not. Uh, he ran for eight, so yeah, about eight hexes closer. Well, and here's the here's the kicker about this: we're in round two firing phase right now, and the Mauler and the Naginata have coverage of pretty much the entire center of the map, already going into rentals side of the map oh yeah look you can see the naginata that can hit <laughs> all of the or the two uh, objectives there clear as day and he's not even fully to the edge so he gets another two hexes out of it but he'll be in long mm -hmm. range until that phoenix hawk gets closer then he'll be shooting as though he were short range or medium or however close it decides to get do we know how wide the map is uh, I can look it up real quick. 
47 by 50. Oh, 47 by 50. So I think it's 50 tall and 47 across. Okay. Yep. And already by turn two with LRM coverage, Lincoln already has coverage of the entire center. All right. Now we've gone over Lincoln's list. Let's take a look at Rental's list. Uh, let's start going from north to south as the mechs are arranged right now. We'll start with this Iron Lady that he's nicknamed here. Oh, oh. Oh, hang on. Let's take a look at the firing right. phase while we're here. Oh, oh, oh. Um, there's a little bit of damage going on to one of those claw hammers. Uh, oh, an upper leg and a hip actuator on one of those claw hammers. That's not good. Needed 10s and rolled the 12. That's crippling. Oh, and he falls over and bonks himself a little bit. And he does not make the seatbelt check and takes a pilot hit already. Okay, well, we're talking about the claw hammer. Never mind. Let's take a look at this thing that just got pretty much laid <laughs> right on the start on turn two. It's the beauty of LRM coverage. Okay, this thing is a 30 tonner. Uh, he's got it at 2 4, 2 gunnery, 4 piloting, which is kind of spicy if you ask me and it's only 1500 battle value at 2-4 so this is a pretty cheap mech normally its standard movement speed is 5-8 it's got 96 out of uh, 96 armor normally i'm pretty sure it's taken some hits we can actually look at the fresh fresh one in comparison because he is running two of these things yeah they're both 96 out of 96 and they have one lrm5 and seven medium lasers across the mech. Uh, that's not too bad. And it can fire all of those medium lasers and only generate one heat if it runs, if we're not mistaken. Right, Nitro? Or is it two heat? Which one? The claw hammer. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's a one heat. Yeah, it'll generate one, one if it runs. Yeah. So yep, yep. I don't like the fact that this only moves 5.8 and it's a 30 tonner. I think that's going to be a hindrance for him on this very large map. I agree with this. I, I think he's just going to get picked to pieces before he gets across the map and gets into firing range with those standard inner sphere medium lasers, unfortunately. And there is two of them, like we mentioned, both at 1503 battle value, and one of them has already been hipped and legged. <laughs> I think it's got two different crits on it. So I'm going to make a prediction. I, I I was thinking about it before, but I'm going to make it right now. Um, putting aside the the hip misalignment that uh, that Lincoln implied on applied onto rental, I am going to make a prediction that <clears throat> I think Lincoln has the full fledged upper hand on a strategic level here. Uh, I think I have to agree with you. The fact that he's got C3 on such an open map is going to be a huge hurdle to overcome uh, mm -hmm. for rental here. Now, uh, put now combining that with the fact that we got hip damage already, it was round two, hip damage already on one of the lights that's supposed to be a runner for rental. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I, I do believe... I'm going to call it right now. I think Lincoln, Lincoln's going to win. Yeah, I would say Lincoln definitely has an advantage. Uh, but let's go ahead and finish up Rental's list here. Uh, we'll start... or well, We'll continue with the Iron Lady, which is a Caesar CES-5R coming in at 4-4 and 24-11 battle value. Uh, it's got a 4 6 slash four five movement profile because it's got 208 points of hardened armor maxed out on the chassis yeah, that is uh, a beast. yeah that is disgusting um it's also got one two three four er medium lasers it's only got 20 heat sinks but it's also got a goss rifle and a snub nose ppc you can switch into once it gets within those nine hexes so it can poke and it can brawl and it's not going anywhere for a long time with 208 points of hardened armor. 
That's essentially 416 damage you need to do to get rid of all that armor. Well, those side panels, those side torsos are at 22 armor. Multiply that by two. It's almost as if it had 44. Yeah, that's exactly armor. what it is. Because I don't think he's got any armor piercing. Uh, I know we usually don't allow tan tandem charge SRMs. He's got no armor piercing auto cannon ammo, and there are no re-engineered lasers over on uh, on Lincoln's list. So he can he'll be able to hit, but he's going to have a hard time putting that Caesar down. The only thing is, is that it's quite slow at 4-5, so it's not going to get across the map. More than likely, it's just going to hang out in its little area here, holding one of these objectives. This is going to be very interesting. All right, next up, since we've already gone over the uh, claw hammers, let's take a look at this pixie, which he named, uh, uh, it's a Gladiator GLD-7R. Mm -hmm. So this is a 55-tonner coming in at 3-3. Three, three. Wow, that's a very skilled pilot uh, at 2,722 battle value. Wow, that's a quarter of his list right here in this one mech. And it ran for six this turn. It's got TSM active, and he's at nine out of 28. So it's but for good reason, though. Yeah, normally it's a 4-6-6 six movement profile, which sounds strange, but... Right now it's a five seven six because he's uh he's got that TSM active, so he can get that extra hex out of his running speed. So. But we don't normally see a walking speed of odd number and then a running speed of odd number. No, we don't. And I'm actually a little surprised that I think Mega Mech might be off on the uh oh wait, no, it's because the TSM is active. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's calculating it into the base movement. All right, so it's actually got 132 out of 132 points of hardened armor, which is quite a bit for a 55 tonner. It's essentially got 260 something armor on this bad boy, and it's got two ER medium lasers, two ER small lasers, a plasma rifle. Now we're talking and an SRM4, all inner sphere. So it's got enough weapons to keep itself hot and should have enough ammo. Yes, it does. It's got enough ammo to go the distance with that plasma rifle. I like this mech. Yeah. Uh, and looking at it at a uh, four or five standard uh, battle value, it's only 1890. Uh, that is a deal, my friend. I mean, it's got all the bells and whistles, TSM, hardened armor, plasma rifle. I mean, what more could you want out of a solid 55 ton mech? It even jumps. Uh, it's acting like a full-fledged assault, I'm not going to lie. A fast assault. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I like this mech. Um, so, as I... Uh, we'll, we'll finish the list, but it, the dynamic of this match is maybe a little bit different than what we originally anticipated. Uh, so that's that one right there. We've already gone through the two claw hammers. Let's take a look at this one right here. Cherry, which hasn't moved yet. Okay, this is a 2-3 gunnery and piloting, which is insane for what this mech is. It's a Storm Raider STM-R01 coming in at 1,033 battle value at 2-3, which means it's got pretty much nothing on it. It's a 6-9 movement profile, 35 tonner, 80 armor, and an AC-10. And he's got caseless ammo in it because it only has 10 shots normally, one ton of ammo. So he's bumping it up to a full 20 so it can fire every turn, at least, using caseless rounds. Uh, there okay. is a jam chance if you roll snake eyes on the shot, then he's pretty much done with the mech because it only has one weapon that does over five damage. He'll be immediately in force withdrawal if he ever rolls snake eyes while firing that AC-10. And that's a bit of a loss if that actually does happen. Yeah. This yeah. thing is... Let me see here. This it's, thing is... What were you going to say? No, it's a 2-3, so he's probably going to be hitting consistently with that 2 gunnery. Yes. But I do feel that if it does jam, it's a full loss for the match itself. Simply because this thing is also carrying a mace. Oh, so yeah, that's true. To come in close and smash face you know what it's not that much of a loss then that's right i forgot the storm reader has a mace so if it 
does lose its AC 10, it goes full melee, assuming it survives to make it into melee range and just starts trying to molly whop things with his mace. Because we usually don't follow uh, the force withdrawal force movement where you have to move toward the edge of the map. So we can still run around trying to club things. So we are currently at the end of round three. And just to give, try to, just to try and give a, like a, a, a visual. Well, there will there, be a visual. This is going to go on YouTube. Oh, it's going to be going on YouTube. Oh, okay, cool. Never mind then. But no, by all means, explain the situation on the board, please, before we get into his last match. No, the the formation of those six hot spots are in a sort of diamond formation. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six hexagonal formation. There you go. Um, surrounding the middle of the map. And then Lincoln is trying to take over the top, coming in from the top slightly. And then Rental's coming in from the bottom right. <laughs> of which Lincoln has also extended his crab down there. That seems more like a small skirmish there. But that's the general setup. That's the general gist of this. I am yeah. intrigued to see how this continues to play out throughout the coming rounds. Yeah, as it stands now, Lincoln will be getting one objective point uh, currently because I don't think any of Rental's mechs can make it to contest the Mauler. Uh, on his home edge right there on his home side I should say objective and once they roll at the end of this round to see where the next one pops up uh, it could be anybody's game because uh, if Lincoln gets lucky and another one pops up on his side that means that rental stuck going over across the map to try and contest those if not he's just going to start racking up objective points however if it pops yeah. up over on rental side, he can pull back one of his damaged mechs like that, uh, like that claw hammer that already got a hip crit and just sit on the objective with it and not worry about it too much. He's got enough speed to an extent that he can turn around and come back and retake it. I don't see that Caesar that's only four or five <laughs> or four, six, uh, running out of or four or five because the hardened armor running across the map to try and contest anything i think it's just going to stay on its side and if it gets unlucky and its objective area doesn't get rolled at all uh it's going to be really punishing for rental mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of rental we'll go ahead and take a look at the last mech as they're finishing up their firing phase uh, it's a Koshi Standard 3. I have used this mech before, and it is solid uh, in its job. It's a Really? Yeah, it's a 4-5 gunnery piling. This is the least skilled mech. I think this is probably just filler to get them extra bonus points because it's got a 7-11-6 movement profile, but it also has masks, so it can bump itself up to 7-14-6 movement profile. So he's getting the mask plus jump jets tax here. And it's only got 67 armor, so not the most durable thing in the world. But it does have six heavy small lasers and tag. Uh, I don't think he's got any semi-guided ILRMs here, but there is the possibility to tag something. Oh, uh -oh. okay, I see red. Let's get into the damage report. Looks like that claw hammer just got nailed Again, I'm pretty sure this is the one that's been damaged before. So it just lost its left arm and got critted. No, no. It, yeah, no. It's just on the left arm for now. Uh, and in the left torso got critted. No, here it is. Oh, and a critical hit on the right lower leg. Uh, which section destroyed? Never mind. <laughs> He's missing a leg too. So oh, that's full on fledged legged. Yeah, that claw hammer is not going anywhere in a hurry. It's going to be battle value waiting to get picked up later. L look at that. Look at that. Naginata is... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ooh. The Naginata is 18 hexes away, and it has seven to hit. Yeah, because that Phoenix Hawk is not 18 hexes away. It's a much closer. Now, one thing I did know is that the Phoenix Hawk took a leg crit there. Oh, it did? Yeah, it did. One of the LRMs off of one of those smaller mechs nailed him on the claw hammer. I'm pretty sure it was the one that's prone, if I'm not mistaken. 
Mm, I see a critical on a jump jet and the engine. Yep, there it is. Yeah, it wasn't a leg, sorry. It was a left torso crit, jump jet, and engine. So now he's down to uh, five jump, if I'm not mistaken, and he's generating an extra five heat. He is no longer neutral. And on top of that, it's a double XL. Ooh, that's nasty. So he's he wasn't neutral to begin with. Oof. <laughs> that's a lot of heat going that Phoenix Hawks' way. And he was relying on that to get in close and deliver data. And that mm -hmm. golden BB just completely changed he's, the dynamic of the mech. He's going to have to fire less with the Phoenix Hawk if he wants to keep it as a spotter. Yeah, and he can't rely on jumping now that he's only got a five jump. Uh, I mean, you can. It's the same TMM as jumping for six. But uh, I'm going to say he's probably going to rely on running now more, more so. Possibly. Coming into the beginning of round four, movement is starting. While the Phoenix Hawk is hurt, just a smidgen there, still carrying that battle armor. They continue to square off, and it continues to be alive and up and kicking. Definitely kicking. It's approaching from the north side, so meaning approaching basically the Caesar, the hardened armor Caesar. I guess that's on purpose. Getting shots on the Caesar as early as possible before it closes in would be ideal. Lowering that armor a bit. Not much, not much. He moved the Caesar backwards a little bit to try and get some distance. Um, but the Phoenix Hawk, I think, it continues to try and close in on the Caesar on purpose as well. Getting shots on that Caesar as early as possible, I think, is ideal. Lowering that armor a bit from a distance at low to hit values. Yeah, so now we can see Lincoln is going to be scoring twice because it's now over up at the north end at the north objective the panther is now in position to score in that little ditch there yes so yeah the caesar also generated one tmm by scooching so this is definitely not looking good for rental uh the fact that not a single one of the first early objectives have come up on his side is uh potentially game losing i mean we'll see how long this goes he's coming across the center of the map with the gladiator he's literally out in no man's land making a mad dash toward the naginata just as a fresh reminder this is the beginning of round four with the 12 o'clock the eight o'clock and the six o'clock hotspots active Oh, I didn't know the six o'clock was active. Okay, I didn't see that. I didn't catch that. So, Rental's not as far behind on objectives as I originally thought, but uh, Lincoln is going to be out to an early lead. Yes, that's the definitely. And there it is. Moving into Phoenix Hawk, dropping some standard battle armor into those woods next to the Caesar and getting that sweet, sweet C3 linkage. Yep, so they are going to be hammering that Caesar, if I'm not mistaken, if they're in range. Mm. Mm. Uh, may, may not, actually. Yeah, they could, <laughs> if they so choose, but since he backed up, I think they're going to be slightly out of range of that ERPPC. Maybe uh, still in range of the LRMs. Let's take a look. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The LRMs are 21 maximum, but the oh, ERPPC cool. is 23. Okay. So maybe the, Nagan the Naganata can hit it. But yeah. not the Mauler. Yeah, just barely. Even if the Naginata moves up one, he's still going to be out of range. He'd have to completely abandon the uh, objective in order to get within range of the Caesar. But he can plink him with the ERPPC if he so chooses. Uh, more than likely, he's probably going to shoot at something a little more pressing. Mm, oh. Keepsake at the bottom left. Uh, one thing to note, that Koshi Standard 3 does have ECM, and he has apparently turned it on to ECCM, because now we do not see the C3 line going back from the Mauler to the Naginata. So he's Trace Buster Bustering uh, the C3 network for the Mauler right now. No, 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 that, that's regular ECM. Regular ECM does that. No, well, never mind. 
<laughs> it, it, it's ECM the other way, would yeah, counter. to protect yeah. it. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Nah, that's what I'm thinking. And that's what the Phoenix Hawk has. And, you know, that's interesting because I was going to mention this earlier, but I didn't notice. I did not know that there was a C, uh, a C Jesus, uh, an ECM mech on rental side. Yes. Now I'm seeing it with Peepsake. Yeah, the Koshi 3 uh, is an objective runner extraordinaire. If I'm not mistaken, it may also have a probe. No, it doesn't. Just an ECM. Mm, ECM, mask, targeting computer, and a light tag for utility. Okay, okay. One, two, yeah. three, four, it's five, a six, solid six, six heavy small lasers. Yeah, that target computer cancels out the plus one from those heavy smalls. It's solid. Like I said, I like it. As, oh, it does have an active probe. I apologize. Yeah, it's a solid objective runner for those missions that do require you to have an active probe to get a bonus or to make it easier oh, to score the objective. Yeah, I, I knew it did. I ran two of them when I ran my full <laughs> jump jet mask list, which performed spectacularly bad. Oh, Rental's advancing on that 8 o'clock one. Yeah, he is. He's closing the gap with that other claw hammer and the Koshi Standard 3, and he's swinging the crab around to try and execute this claw hammer that's stuck on the ground. Oh, wow, he made the 9 to stand up. Okay, so this firing phase is going to tell us a lot about the priorities of each player. I'm assuming the Mauler is going to unload into either that Koshi or the Clawhammer. Probably the Koshi, considering it's closer and is a significant threat. Uh, actually, both of them are significant threats to it. But that being said, the Naginata is going to have some decisions to make. Does it go for the Gladiator? Does it start unloading or poking at that Caesar with its ERPPC? Does it help out the Mauler? Uh, this is going to be real interesting. And surprisingly enough, the crab's going into the rear of that gladiator. On tens. Ooh, I guess he didn't, feels like he doesn't need to shoot at the, uh, the, uh, the crippled claw hammer. Just going to kick it. Actually, if he kicks it, I think he automatically hits that leg that's only got two structure left. And considering it didn't move and... If I'm not mistaken, he's a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, he only, he's only going to need like a 4 to hit and get rid of that leg and permanently leave it prone. Okay, so no, he's choosing to go for 5s on the ERPPC on that Caesar from downtown. And the Caesar needs 10s with the snub nose and the Gauss rifle into the Phoenix Hawk. The Phoenix Hawk needs 9s. And he is firing at the Phoenix Hawk. Okay, not choosing not to fire at the battle armor, which are probably even harder to hit, or just as hard. Uh, but he's going to have at least one more turn before that battle armor closes into melee distance. So the Panther is going to be firing at the Gladiator. The Gladiator is going to be splitting fire at the Panther and the Mauler. Huh. 11s for the ER medium there. I'm not sure why he's splitting and not just unloading into the Panther. Hmm, interesting. But the Mauler is going to be firing at this guy down here trying to deny him objectives, needing nines on those shots because I guess he didn't move hardly. Only got a plus one TMM. And these guys are probably harder because they're within those LRM uh, point blank range. Although he is splitting fire. Those LB10s need 7s on the Koshi. Okay, that makes sense. Because it's probably a really tough shot if it's not impossible to hit him with those LRMs at point blank. Or under minimum. And here we go into firing for round 4. Ooh. Mauler hits with one of the LB10s on the Koshi. Nothing happens otherwise to the Koshi. Uh, the PPC hits the hardened armor Caesar, <laughs> tickling it for 10 damage. Uh, a whole lot of missing going on here. Oh, here we go. Claw hammer hits the mauler with one, two, three, four medium lasers. That's going to trigger a piloting check. Uh, the other claw hammer hits the crab that's point blank range with it with two medium lasers. And other than that, it's a whole lot of missing. Mauler makes his piloting check. And it looks like 
Where is that? Oh, fisticuffs. There we go. There's that 10 damage to the leg, which we already knew was going to happen. Needed a four, like I said. Rolled a six. Crits out the leg, and it goes internal on the left torso. Ooh, brutal. And that's going to mean he automatically falls and takes a little bit more damage. That's probably another piloting hit, or the first piloting hit on that crab. Oh, he is immobile, so let's take a look at him. Four hits. Yep, there it is. Which means he took... That means he took at least one head crit. One head hit there. Let's take a look at that round report again. I want to see exactly what happened when he fell. Okay, there it is. So that transfers... There's one head, one damage to the head. There we go for failing the fall. So that's his third pilot. That's his fourth. Needed sevens. Oh, needs a 10 to stay conscious on four and doesn't make it. So that's probably going to be all she wrote for that ham for that claw hammer. So it looks like <laughs> the Naginata is in position to score another objective right now. It looks like Lincoln is going to have three objectives to rentals one, which is a little on the unfortunate side for rental. Uh, the RNG here is definitely favoring Lincoln. I mean, he only had to move his mechs up to his side of the map, and now he's got three objectives. Whereas rental, in order to contest, has to make it all the way across this huge map of 40-something hexes. So RNG also not going in Rental's favor uh, when we already said that the matchup is probably not going to be in Rental's favor either just because of the C3 network and the long range firepower that he's bringing to bear on such a big map. What he does have going for him, however, uh, for Rental is that he's going to be in point blank range next turn with two mechs on that mauler. He may be able to... Just crit him out, hopefully, within one turn if he can get into the rear arc. And then uh, he'll have two to two. Uh, he will be behind on objectives as it stands now. Uh, but it's not over until it's over. He can definitely come back from this early deficit. That's an interesting choice. Looks like the Koshi and the Gladiator are both making an attack run on the Naginata. I expected the Koshi to go for the Mauler, but since the Mauler hasn't moved yet... He's jumping the gun and taking out that network with that Koshi, which is a solid play. So now he won't be able to poke that Caesar from long from downtown for 10 damage every turn with that ERPPC on fives. And that means that a good, what, 10% of his battle value is out the drain with that ECM blocking out the C3 network. And I don't think he's going to pull back that Phoenix Hawk. So it looks like the Panther stood still, and he's going to get that objective uncontested. He's going to ignore the Claw Hammer for now, uh, at least as far as the Crab is concerned. He's going to chase after the Gladiator. Uh, the mech down here on the bottom, the Storm Raider, is also not going to move enough to generate a TMM. Just going to turn his gun around so he can at least shoot at the Mauler. And we're going to have to see how this shakes out. All of the uh, advancing mechs have already moved up. And it's currently Lincoln's turn. The only thing he has left to move is that Mauler, the Phoenix Hawk, and the Inner Sphere Standard Battle Armor. I'm a little surprised he didn't move the Battle Armor first, just because they're not exactly quick, and you can all you can assume they're going to make a beeline for that uh, Caesar, so they can start either contesting or uh, just attacking the Caesar in the rear, and trying to get through that massive slab of armor and get some leg crits or something. Oh, the Mauler decides to not move, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, and he charges him. Not actually, but gets into melee range on the front side, which I don't know if that's a good idea there, Rental. Uh, you're going to open yourself up to a kick from a, what, 90-ton mech? Uh, yeah, 90-tonner. That's going to almost take one of your legs off, if not completely take one of your legs off. 
yeah, you don't even have a 18 armor in a leg. So if he does land a kick, you are legging that mech, which is dangerous considering they're not fast enough to generate a high TMM. Hell, I would have pulled back one hex just to be not in kicking range. But he is contesting currently. If he survives uh, the shooting phase and the melee phase, uh, he will be in a good spot. And there's the Iron Standard Battle Armor, which jumped for all of one, two, three, four hexes. Ooh, didn't expect that. I thought most Battle Armor only jumped for three. These guys are pretty quick. So they could have made it to within one hex of that Caesar, if I'm not mistaken, and try to flush him out or flush him away from his little perch here on the objective. But choosing to instead jump into the forest and try to give him more cover. Same with the Phoenix Hawk, not willing to step into melee range of that Caesar, which is, is a wise decision. I'll give him that. Um, but uh, also not really giving themselves good shots on the Caesar either. Which, to be fair, is going to take a long time to get through that armor. Okay, looks like movement is either almost done or done for this round. I don't see anything else that still needs to move. Uh, rental. Oh, just needs to move that Caesar and figure out what he's going to do with it. If he moves it up, he's going to be in LRM range. But I think that Naginata and Mahler have more pressing issues right now. So does he want to close the gap and try and give himself better numbers on either the crab or does he want to defend himself and give shots onto the phoenix hawk and is standard looks like he's going for the latter and he's going to put shots into the phoenix hawk and or maybe that panther in the north it's also a viable easy target because he did not move and he's in a ditch so he does not get cover that's not a good sign oh only needed eight that tag to hit. Uh, the heavy mediums are very short range, so he's not in range of those yet. So the Naginata does have one more turn before he gets uh, clobbered by that Koshi. We'll see what his target priority is in this shooting phase. It is currently Mech Warrior Lincoln's turn to fire. We'll see what he decides to shoot with first. Some gimmies would be the Interspear Standard, which I don't think are in range of their machine gun right now. So we can just not fire with them. Uh, here we go. It is simultaneous fire, I do believe, is on currently. So, yeah. So, Lincoln is... I'm sorry, Rental is going to unload into the Panther with the Pixie. Plasma Rifle on 8s, ER Medium, and an SRM, I think, on 10s? Which is surprising. You'd think he'd just burrow into the Naginata, but no, he's taking shots at the Panther. And the Mauler is actually going to fire at the Koshi needing sevens. I think he's exactly seven X's away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. So he's in perfect short range of those LRMs. Uh, probably going to be unloading with the LBX's too. No, no, he's not. I don't see him firing anything else. I don't see him splitting fire. Oh yeah, there he is. He's splitting fire with the LBX's into the, into the claw hammer. That's closed the distance. And the claw hammer is unloading into the mauler needing fours with all of those medium lasers that's a whole lot of damage coming his way uh, naginata is going into the gladiator naturally because it's right in front of him needing eights with those lrms and six with the erppc let's see how this shakes out okay gladiator nails the panther with the plasma rifle and er medium uh not really much damage he's still in armor but the Mauler unloads into the Koshi. Ooh, gets a critical hit on the upper leg and the hip by stripping out the armor in that leg. One armor remaining on the rear left torso, uh, and he's got a crit on a heavy small. So he's down a weapon on that Koshi right there, just from that one Mauler shot uh, with his LRMs. He hit with both sets. At the, no, yeah, he hit with both sets on sevens. And then sixes on the LBX tens connect and just sandblast this claw hammer up in his face not doing enough uh only hitting with 18 pellets not enough to generate a psr but if the mauler is still standing he's gonna 
kick him enough to generate an automatic fall if he connects with it. Uh, Caesar not connecting with any of his powerful weapons. The Gauss Rifle and Stum Nose both miss, as does the ER Medium. Crab does nail the Gladiator in the rear with a Plasma Rifle, generating three more heat. So uh, the big hits this turn are on that Koshi standard three, which is looking pretty rough. He did fall. Oh, and there's that leg attack that I just mentioned from the Mauler. Just 18 damage to the left leg, completely destroys it, and two damage transfers to the left torso. Uh, going into melee with a 90 ton mech when you're a 30 tonner is not recommended, and that is exactly why. Uh, so, for now, that claw hammer is not in force withdrawal so this point is contested for this turn uh looks like lincoln is going to be up two objectives uh this round the naginata and the panther for two rentals one on the uh cherry down here on the south end on the storm raider now to determine which is the last one to be lit up is it going to be the caesar and he gets a free point here or is it going to be the one that's empty with no units near it that can touch it all right i'm back all right so we just finished round four i do believe uh we're into round five i'll catch you up real quick as i've been talking to the audience but as it stands now the koshi made an attack run on the naginata to disrupt the c3 lance uh of the C3 uh, network, and the Mauler uh, was right at short range with those LRMs and nailed him with both sets on sevens, crippled his hip and his foot, and took out one of the heavy mediums and one of the arms and went internal. Uh, the Koshi is not looking good. It's probably not going to be able to make it into contesting range of anything next turn, but the Gladiator will be in contesting range of the Naginata, likely this turn. Unfortunately, though, uh, Rental decided to go into melee range with the Mauler with one of his claw hammers, and I said it before it happened, if the Mauler lands a kick on the claw hammer, the claw hammer doesn't have enough armor uh, for its leg to survive a kick, no matter which leg he hits. Now, full armor, the leg is just gone. And unfortunately, he lost his leg and is now prone, not crippled, uh, but prone in point-blank range. Uh, in front of a mauler with one leg so he's not long for this world as you can see here but is it preventing lincoln from scoring there it is this turn so luckily enough the last objective to go live went live in the caesar's hex so it is now two to two uh, objectives this turn so that claw hammer sacrificed itself <laughs> pretty much uh to give himself one turn of one less objective and okay. it, interesting yeah and it looks like uh lincoln is not happy with that uh he's gonna contest the caesar in point blank range with the phoenix hawk here we go again uh the caesar is no pushover at 70 tons how much armor do you have in your legs there uh lincoln Okay, 19. You can survive a kick, at least. <laughs> One kick. Uh, but I would not have recommended going into point-blank range and giving him the kick opportunity. To be fair, hardened armor mechs do suffer a penalty when it comes to piling checks, including kicks. So it's not likely that it will land. But if it does, it will take a huge chunk out of that armor. It won't go internal on the first kick, though, right? No, not unless some other damage happens to, uh, you know, go internal. Like, maybe the Goss Rifle or the Snub Nose PPC. Depending on where those land, it's possible it could, but... You're, yes, this turn he can survive the kick, but... Oh. Why give him the option? We have an interesting development right after that. Ooh, what happened there? Did he the go Koshi unconscious? Went immobile, I no, think so. no, that's that's the that's the hammer. That's the claw hammer. Hammer. I'm sorry, the claw hammer. Yeah. It looks like he uh, failed a PSR, failed the seatbelt check, 
and bonked himself out needing fours from the looks of it because he's only got two piloting hits and he's KO'd. That's some rough luck. Uh, yeah, uh, that claw, that little hammer is dead this turn. I'm calling it now. He's just going to aim right at the center torso and just burrow through him with those two LB10s. And that also prevents its mission from being accomplished. It's no longer contesting that. No, as of as of last turn it was, but now it's not this turn. <laughs> so he yeah. doesn't even get the extra turn of contesting out, uh, which is, uh, you hate to see it. Uh, and it's a standard engine, so he is going to have to burrow through that center torso if he wants to uh, completely eliminate it. And if he only hits him with those LB10s, he's going to be shy of one damage. But he does have a devastating 18 damage kick, which... As we saw last round, <laughs> it's going to do terrible, terrible things to it. Oh, look at that. The Koshi stood up with a hip and foot crit and made it into the objective. I didn't think he would make it. Honestly, Interesting. he okay. ran for four and is now contesting the Naginata point blank range. It's not considered crippled. Nope. Moderate damage. Nope. Oh. He's only got two crits in his leg and he's internal on the arm. You need to be internal on three limbs or two torsos from the front. Rear armor does not count if there's still front armor remaining. Uh, Rental's just like, screw it. He's yeah. Pedal to the metal here. Yeah. At this point, he's A, behind in objectives, B, currently down two mechs because both of those hammers are pretty much out of commission. And he needs to make some magic happen. So the Naginata is backing up just slightly so as to not uh, give the Gladiator a chance to get in range of melee, maybe? Nope, that Gladiator is too fast. He's probably just protecting his rear because that Gladiator looks like it could have made it to the rear arc. So that Naginata oh. is about to get double teamed by a lot of heavy small lasers and the Gladiator here. Okay. I don't know if if Rental is going to have TSM. Maybe he'll have TSM, but it won't be at the optimal point of 9 heat. He does have TSM. He's at 12 heat. He jumped to get there. Uh, so he's okay. currently at 12. The TSM is active. He does have a firing penalty and a movement penalty for sure at 12 heat. So his shots are probably going to be fairly inaccurate, but he's also a 3-3 pilot, so, I mean, who cares? <laughs> he's likely still going to nail him. But how much is that? It's 55 divided by 5, 11, 11 times 2, 22 damage kick. Yeah, I mean, the Naginata can survive one of those, but he's also likely going to be kicked. Well, actually, no, I take that back. The Koshi can't kick. He's got a hip crit. But any additional damage to the leg that gets kicked, and it's the front arc, fortunately for him, so it's a 50-50 as to what leg is hit. But uh, if he takes 10 damage to any one of those legs, it could strip the armor of it. Well, that will proc a double PSR, won't it? 20, yes. 20 damage barrier and also because he got kicked. Correct, yeah. So come the melee phase, assuming the gladiator is still standing, uh, expect the Naginata to get rocked and he's only a 4-5 so that's going to be a 6 I think for being kicked for 20 plus damage mm -hmm. and then what 5 for just being kicked yeah I do believe oh yeah there's the failed piloting check and the blackout of the hammer oof brutal I do believe that that mo no the whole network is down yeah because the ECM's on the master. Woohoo! Okay. Yeah, so I understand why he ran up there with that Koshi, but doing so, at least in the hex that he went in, left him open to those LRM shots at exactly perfect seven hexes away for short range. But it did shut down the network, uh, which now that they're in point blank range, I don't think matters all that much. It matters for the Mauler, but not the Naginata. The Naginata is pretty much defenseless, having nothing but LRMs and one ERPPC. The Crab is going to have to do everything it can uh, to protect this Naginata from 
this brutal onslaught. Gladiator turning its guns on the crab, yep. firing its ER small and SRM4. That's surprising. Needs tens for both. You think he'd need significantly less to hit the Naginata? Yeah, he would need sixes to hit the Naginata, and he's instead he's going for the tens on the crab, which is surprising. I'm sorry, sevens because he's overheating. Uh, maybe he's just uh, he knows the Naginata is not a threat now that he's in point blank range. Or realistically, and he's going for the kicks, hoping to just kick the Naginata to death. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, he's, it's not a total non-threat. No, you're Those right. It's not. Hurt. And, and they that can, ERPPC. And it can still punch. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. If it doesn't fire that uh, LRM-15, he can give him the old one-two, which is no joke. I mean, granted, it's a hardened armor gladiator. Even if you do bonk him in the head, it's not going to be enough to go internal, because it does have essentially 18 armor in the head. Yeah, very true. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to come down to the rolls. Uh, he's going to need a. Three, four, five, six. He's going to need a four to hit that Naginata with the kick, assuming he stays standing, which he's a three pilot. Uh, unless he rolls snake eyes, uh, I'm assuming he's going to be fine. Yeah, he should have taken the sevens, in my opinion. The game is a game of attrition, attrition, up to a certain degree, after all. Yep, so. and the Panther taking a pot shot at that lingering claw hammer that's got four KO or four pilot hits and is knocked out and hasn't moved in like four turns. Uh, the mauler needs gonna a be... five at that distance. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, not moving. Minus four counts for a lot. Okay. Oh, there we go. Inner sphere standard battle armor. Get the leg attack on the Caesar. But remember, it's hardened armor, so you get minus two to that crit roll. Uh, so it would have been a crit, but the hardened armor minus two comes into play and makes it a seven. So no crit there. Uh, Gladiator whiffs all three shots on tens. To be fair, he would have missed the sevens on the Naginata too with those rolls. But the Koshi standard three misses with two out of five of those heavy smalls. So, yeah, the Naginata is not going to take enough damage, I don't think, to uh, generate a PSR so far. That is, those hits are good though. Hit the right leg, hit the left leg, bringing them down to twenty six. Yeah, that's what you want if you're a uh, rental right now. But the mauler just does its namesake and mauls the Koshi. Uh, two more crits on a leg. Uh, that Koshi is now prone and in force withdrawal. Oof. Yeah, let's pull up the combat log because I want to see more of what went down here. Uh, legs got destroyed on the Koshi. Oh, both legs? Yeah. And there's the left torso on the claw hammer that the panther shot at. Just completely gone. Eight damage transfers to the center torso. Just chipping away at it. Uh, free free battle value, waiting for the taking. And there's the ERPPC, which crits the engine, and the gyro on the Koshi. So not only is it hipped and multiple leg crits, it's now got a gyro. That thing, if it's still around, it's automatically going to fall. Oh, and there's the kick from the mauler, which destroys the right arm and goes to the center torso. Five damage transfers and only six armor remaining in that center torso. Gladiator, wait a minute, takes 12 damage. He goes for the punches. He's going for the headshot with 12 damage punches. He didn't go for the kick. Oh, there it is. Only need sixes, though. You only needed sixes. Only connected with one. Okay. All right. I see. That's the play. That's why he didn't shoot at it. Huh. No arm-mounted weapons were used. No wonder. Yep. That's why he went for the tens on the grab. That explains everything. Okay. Uh, but the Naginata did kick the Gladiator. 19 damage to the right leg. Uh, seven armor remaining. If he gets kicked in that leg again, it will go internal. Uh, and the Phoenix Hawk also kicks the Caesar, but the Caesar's fine. 23 armor remaining. They just have to make their piloting checks, which they all do. Uh, five for the Caesar, four is for the Gladiator, and four is for the Phoenix Hawk, because the Phoenix Hawk was also kicked by the Glad by the Caesar. Sorry. So he's got five armor remaining in that right leg. He can't take another hit there. So for how big this map is, there's quite a bit of fisticuffs happening. 
but more importantly, uh, when it comes to objectives, I think it's going to be a wash again, two to two. Yeah, so the Mauler is uncontested because that is an unconscious claw hammer, point blank with it. Uh, the Panther and the Storm Raider are both uncontested, and the Caesar is contested with the Phoenix Hawk, so never mind there. Uh, it's going to be two to one. Sorry. Two for Lincoln, one for Rental, and contested over here between the Gladiator and the Naginata because that Koshi is now in force withdrawal. He does not uh, count for contesting, so he does not win the 2 2. So, objectives are deceptively close, uh, depending on how this next couple rounds shakes out. There's some gimmies, like the Panther and that Storm Raider, automatically going to be generating one objective for each player. Uh, the Mauler is going to be inject, uh, is a gimme for Lincoln here. This battle over the uh, northwest side objective is, I think, is going to determine the game. Uh, the Gladiator punching for 12 on the Naginata. Uh, the Koshi's pretty much done. Uh, it just needs to be poked a little bit more and it'll blow up. The Crab is going to have to do some intervening on this... Uh, on this gladiator. He, he's going to have to win initiative to get that Naginata out of melee range. Okay, start at round seven and rental wins initiative. That's bad for Lincoln. So that means no matter what, as long as rental keeps his gladiator for last, he will be able to get those two punches on that Naginata. Hell, he may even be able to get rear shots on him and go internal that way for 12 damage punches in the rear. Yeah, it's only got eight armor on the side torso, so he can start generating some crits even if he doesn't hit the head, if he can swing around to the backside of the Naginata. Oh, okay. So one thing to note here, that Gladiator no longer has active TSM because of those punches. It didn't have enough weapons to generate enough heat to maintain it. So this turn, he's not got to worry about the one tap knockout punches. Uh, he can still double tap him with punches for six damage and take him out. But uh, he is going to have to either just go for rear shots on Naginata and go internal and actually shoot this turn to get his TSM active again or figure out something else. Uh, pull back and maybe regroup. We'll, we'll, we'll see. More than likely, were it me, uh, the Phoenix Hawk is no longer contesting the Caesar. He's just jumping away after that brutal kick to his leg. Can't say I blame him. Uh, the Inner Sphere Standard Battle Armor are there. I do not know if they can contest the Caesar by themselves. Uh, let's double check the rules here. Uh, it just says units. It doesn't say anything about battle armor, infantry, don't count. They only have to be dismounted. So those interfere standard will cancel out that Caesar as long as they remain in the objective area with it. And that Phoenix Hawk is free to pull back and help out the Naginata. And it looks like he's just going to abandon the, uh, the objective here with the Naginata, pull back, put his back up to a level two hex. So he cannot be punched or kicked in the rear, uh, which is a smart play by him. But that does leave him open for front shots. So a little bit of a trade-off. Uh, Lincoln is also pulling back with the Inner Sphere Standard Battle Armor, giving up the objective to the Caesar over here. A little surprised. I would have at least kept him in for a turn or two just to contest. So he's given up the points to Rental there, free of charge. And he will take them and not move the Caesar and get slightly easier shots on either the Phoenix Hawk or the Inner Sphere Standard Battle Armor. Or the Panther, for that matter. I see Lincoln is playing with the objective up there, with the crab. Yep, he's going to contest with the crab. Yeah. yeah. So one thing to note, the Gladiator does not have TSM because it punched last round. It didn't have enough weapons to generate enough heat to maintain it. And Lincoln decided to pull his Nagi Nada back up to the level 2. Oh, okay. And he decided to stand still with the Gladiator and just stand and deliver against the Crab. 
can't say I blame him. I am a little surprised that he gave up that objective for free to the Caesar. Meanwhile, the Storm Raider is laying down the law on the Mauler. Yeah, and eating sevens with that AC-10, which is no joke. I mean, that's free shots. Might as well. And the Mauler needs sixes, it looks like, to hit that uh, poor little prone Koshi standard, which is not long for this world. Oh no, sevens, and he needs sixes to hit the Gladiator, which did not move. I mean, it does have hardened armor, but you still don't want to be taking free shots. And needs nines at point well within minimum range on the Naginata. So if any of those hit, then cool. If not, no biggie. Oh, he's Crete seeking Mauler to Mauler to Koshi. Yep. Uh, what do we have here? The Phoenix Hawk needs eights, and the Caesar needs nines with the Goss Rifle and the Snub Nose to hit the Phoenix Hawk. Let's see how this turns out. Uh, there you go. Storm Raider bonks the Mauler for 10 damage in the right torso. Three armor remaining there. Uh, Mauler does connect with one of the two LRMs onto the Gladiator. Just shave some armor off. But he does get the kill on the Koshi with those LBX-10s. The first one hits, clusters for six, and then double crits the engine on one pallet. Which uh, is enough to put him down because he took an engine and a gyro hit earlier. And an ER C3 small laser. Network? Go ahead. Oh, and an ER small laser for good measure into that claw hammer in point blank range. The C3 network is back up. Yeah, it is. And that's going to be real bad for rental next round. Uh, the Naginata whiffs with all three of those LRM 15s in minimum range, but he does connect with the PPC. Uh, okay, now it's Fisticuff turn. I'm curious if he's going to go for the kick or the punch on the crab. The crab hasn't taken too much damage. Uh, okay, there we go. He kicks the left leg on the gladiator, and the gladiator returns the favor and kicks the crab. The crab's only got one armor left in that left leg. Uh, but he doesn't really need to stand and deliver if he doesn't want to. He can just pull back and then pick apart the gladiator from range. Now, it does appear that he did f not finish off that poor little claw hammer that's point blank with him 18 damage kicks uh, is going through every single point of armor that this claw hammer has he's now missing an arm uh, and he's internal nine on the center and the center torso so nine structure remaining on that claw hammer next turn will surely be its end surely there's Unless he kicks the head, which it does enough damage to kill him outright, but 18 damage kick will anywhere will just eliminate the rest of this mech. Which is now no longer unconscious, surprisingly. So it can try and move, uh, but I don't think it can get up because it's no longer got any legs. Oh no, it does have one leg, but it doesn't have any arms, so it's not going anywhere. It still has weaponry. Yeah. Three medium lasers are still operational. Yeah, but it doesn't have any arms, so it can't prop itself up. So it's literally just another uh, initiative sink. And there's six center torso left <laughs> on the other claw hammer that's been knocked out since, like, turn two or three. Uh, he's chipping away slowly. Eventually, he'll take him out with that ERPPC from that panther. Only needing fives to hit consistently. Let's see who won initiative this round. Ooh, it's Lincoln. Ooh, that's not good for rental. So he can just not move the Mauler, not move the Panther. Just maintaining objectives. Uh, this turn, it was uh, two to two, if I'm not mistaken. Mauler and Panther score, and the Caesar and the Storm Raider score for rental. And this one over here on the left still remains contested. So Rental's putting up a good showing here, surprisingly. Uh, initially, I thought this would be a blowout for Lincoln with that C3 network. But he quickly closed the gap and brought that TSM to bear to change it up. Okay, so because the close range battle is 
going decently for rental. I don't know if he's going to be able to win it because that crab, the Naginata, and the Mauler are all going to focus down that Gladiator. I don't foresee it being long for this world. Uh, that Panther is eventually going to finish off that abandoned Storm Raider and the Mauler is going to take off the, I'm sorry, the abandoned Hammer and the Mauler will take out the other Hammer that's just in melee. We are currently in round eight, right? Correct. I do believe this is the halfway point and all of the objectives clear this turn. Yes. So it's a brand new objective game and one new one will pop up somewhere uh, at the end of this turn. And somebody will likely be getting uh, objective points or in a contested hex. Okay, see, now I don't like this. He just jumped right back into melee with the Phoenix Hawk uh, on the Caesar, and that Caesar has not moved yet. He can definitely move around to the side and get a side leg kick onto the damaged leg that he already kicked previously and go internal on that Phoenix Hawk. There must be some method to the madness. Maybe the Naginata will move in closer. It could, and then it can just poke away with its ERPPC. Uh, if it abandons the objective, which it already has, and gets closer, it can unload with the LRMs with the live C3 network and actually start dealing some real damage to that Caesar. Oh, and he's going over the top with the Storm Raider, uh, just in case he wants to contest the Mauler, probably next turn, or just turn around and go back the way he came, if he can, and take the objective if it shows up there. Oh, the Naginata moves in to recontest the objective. And one thing to note, that Gladiator does have his TSM active. Um, I don't know if I like that move. To be fair, the Gladiator could just walk up to the Naginata no matter what, because it's fast enough with that TSM and get those punches off anyway. And the jump six, of course. But now he can stand still and make it even easier to get those punches off. Assuming he's still standing when it comes time for the fisticuff phase. And look, that's, I think that uh, Rental did exactly what I just mentioned and move up to get that right leg on the Phoenix Hawk. Oh, they're both pretty low, but that right leg is even lower. 16 damage, which he only, he's only a 70 tonner, so he's only going to do 14. But it will go internal. And then he'll only need two damage in that leg to take it out. Ooh, gambling with the crab supercharger, needing fives. I'm not sure why he activated it and moved all of no hexes. Yeah, he ran for six with a TMM two. Okay, oh, that's why he TMM activated it to get his TMM up. Yep. Makes sense. Okay, because more than likely he's going to be shot at by the gladiator, and the gladiator is going to be punching the Naginata because we are already into the firing phase and that gladiator did not move and he's made his decision on the firing there. Yep, ER small and SRM4 and eating sixes on that crab. I'm curious, oh, the Mauler's turning his sights onto the Storm Raider, doesn't like being encroached on, needs sevens with those LRMs, ooh, ooh. and eights with the LB10s. And to fire back, the Storm Raider only needs sevens as well. But that's exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hexes away. Again, landing right in that short range, perfect bracket for those LRMs. Okay, firing phase. Uh, Caesar takes a little bit of damage. Nothing, home, nothing to write home about. Uh, the Gladiator hits with two ER smalls and whiffs with the SRM4 on sixes. So just chipping away at that crab. The Mauler misses the Storm Raider with the LRMs on fifth, uh, LRM 15s on sevens, but does connect with one of the LB 10s on eights. Uh, and the ER small laser misses. Ooh. Uh oh, we we we. There was some some stuff hang there. On, hang on, hang on. Let's pull it back up. There we go. Ooh, okay. Some drama. Storm Raider hits, uh, crits out one of the LB 10s on the Mauler. The Panther. Finally clears out that claw hammer in the spectacular cascading engine failure. Too bad it's all by itself. And there's nothing around to get blown up with it. Okay, so that's 
points on the board for the Panther. Ooh, physical phase. Here we go. Now we're talking. Oh, no. It's the left arm and the left torso of the Naginata. That's not what he wanted. He's looking for that head. And there's the Phoenix Hawk getting kicked. He does go internal. Two stretch remaining. Gets a crit on the lower leg. And the Mauler, uh-oh, kicks the claw hammer. And the hammer blows up. Mauler takes, what, uh... What, 15 damage? Yep, there it is. Takes 15 damage for free on the Mauler for the Claw Hammer blowing up. So, that's something. I'll take it. And then the kick on the Naginata goes internal into the Gladiator. Two structure remaining. He's losing the Fisticuff fight. That's not what I expected. He needed to hit the head there. Oh, this, is, this could go bad for him. So, at the end of the round... Uh, the Naginata is left standing. The Gladiator is left standing. TSM deactivated. Uh, the Crab is still fine. The Panther is still, still pretty much unscathed. The Caesar and the Phoenix Hawk are both okay. The Phoenix Hawk not as much okay because he's internal on one of those legs with only two strikes remaining. I as standard battle armor are fine. And the objective goes to Lincoln on the 12 o'clock with the Panther. Oof. Just a Oh, that would have been a big help to just not go to Lincoln <laughs> if it would have went into one of the empty ones or the one that's contested by the Caesar that would have gone a long way for rental but uh, unfortunately that's widening the gap for Lincoln this turn. Uh, Mahler has seen better days though that engine explosion was a free 15 damage shot on him. He is in not quite internal uh, anywhere but an AC 10 to the right torso will go internal or the left leg will also go internal. And AC-10 to the head will take him out because he's only got four armor left. So that Storm Raider is still a threat. Not a huge one, but a threat. Down to just three mechs on Rental's side. Uh, he needs some sort of RNG to go his way. I don't think Lincoln's lost a single unit. I was about to say, let's take some stock real quick of the units available on the map currently. Lincoln has, like you said, not lost anything, but then Rental has lost a Koshi and a two hammers. Correct. So he's down to 50% of his unit number, not necessarily his battle value, because a lot of it's locked up into that Caesar and that Gladiator. Uh oh, uh, Phoenix Hawk jumps. Looks like he falls and is now prone. Because he did have uh, a leg crit. I'm curious to see what happens there at the end of the round. Oh, that PSR was failed. Shoots. Yep. Oh, and the Storm Raider makes it into not quite melee. If he would have turned just one. Oh, he, you know what? He can still bip him with the mace if he torso twists. So he is still in melee. Range. Yep. Okay. Just needs to unload that AC-10 onto him and then bonk him. Right on the right side, which is the weakest side, with three armor left on the right torso. Ho, yep. ho, ho. That's a good play. Yep, definitely knows what he's doing there. And the Mauler did not move, so those are going to be pretty easy hits. Although, since the Mauler did not move, it's going to have pretty easy shots on those uh, the one remaining LB-10. Remember, he just got one critted out, so he's not quite as dangerous at point blank as he was previously. And the Naginata gets out of melee with the Gladiator for now. Oh, but it's redirecting its guns to cover the Mauler, I think. Yeah, I, I think you're right. It's just going to, since the C3 network is live, it's going to nail that poor little Storm Raider with those LRMs. And the Gladiator goes into melee again on the Naginata. Can't quite get to the side where he kicked him. Or, well, he hasn't kicked him. He's only punched him. But the Naginata is still looking pretty good. A six damage punch anywhere other than the left arm is not going to go internal. Uh, so... He needs to hold out for at least another turn as he generates heat. And I don't know if he can, because that crab is right on his right side. Oh, there it is. There's the piloting check. Uh, he's got a damage at leg actuator. Didn't make the five, rolled a three. And he takes the pilot hit for the seatbelt check. Ouch. It's going to need sevens. Yep. <clears throat> They're going to need sevens to hit that... Uh... The uh, Gladiator? Storm Raider. The Storm Raider. Oh, the Storm Raider. Oof. That is nasty. Uh, 
Uh, one thing to note, since the Phoenix Hawk did fall, he is no longer a valid target for that Caesar, because he's behind level 1, I think, cover here? Maybe 2. No, level 1. So yeah, he's safe from the Caesar this turn, which means it can turn its attention to either the Panther or the Battle Armor, and he's choosing the Panther. Oh, oh, I miscalculated. The Naganata's gonna need 9s. Ooh, those are not good oh. numbers. No, not great, but it's better than shooting at the uh, Gladiator at point blank by like six, so <laughs> impossible true. shots. Very true. The Mauler will need sevens. Yeah. There we go. Oh, complete air barrel from the Naginata. Misses everything on nines on oh, that Storm Raider. Not good. Uh, Panther does connect on the Caesar with his ERPPC and the Streak 4, surprisingly in range. <laughs> Ooh, the return fire. Ooh, Caesar connects with the Goss Rifle, uh, but it takes half damage because it's BAR. Some knows PPC, on the other hand, goes internal on the left arm. ER Medium goes internal on the left torso of the Panther. Not looking good for the Panther, anyways. Uh, Storm Raider nails the Mauler for 10 in the CT, 24 armor remaining. Crab misses with the Plasma Rifle and hits with the second one. Destroys the right leg. Ooh, that's bad for that Gladiator. He's no longer fisticuffing anything this turn. My round report go? Okay, there we go. And after that, there's not too much exciting happening. Uh, the Gladiator automatically falls, but it was making a death from a Above attack, damage will be dealt during the physical phase. Okay. All right. I did not notice he was DFAing the Naginata. That explains why he didn't shoot anything. Uh, what that will do, though, is it will force the Naginata out of the hex and make that now contested. As long as he stays un, uh, uncrippled. Anyway. The mace hits on the mauler for Ooh. nine damage. Take that. Hiya. Hit him in nowhere nowhere good, apparently, because he's still got armor in all locations. But that is now a contested location uh, on the left. So if the objective pops up there, which it... We don't know where it's going to pop up yet. It should pop up right now and tell us who, if anyone, is scoring. Uh, it will be contested this turn. So Lincoln only has the north one with the Panther, which is still something compared to nothing for rental right now. So the objective counter is just slowly ticking up for Lincoln. He's probably close to maxing at this point, probably in the 70s or 80s. Question, yes. question, question, question. What about the two o'clock one? The two o'clock one? Uh, that one hasn't been rolled yet, I don't think. They're usually, they're putting oh, little oh, sticky right. notes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah you're they, right, they, you're right. They cleared out uh, at the end of round eight and they're rolling all over again. Oh, there we go. That's the score right now. Currently, Rental is at 30 and Lincoln is at 55. So he's got a hefty 25 point lead on him right now. And it's coming up in space number two, which I think might be the one with the Caesar. So now Rental's coming up five more points. There we are. So at least they're keeping that score ticking. He still has a 25 point lead uh, on Lincoln's case, but at least he's getting more objectives, which will help him out in the overall standings. That's what you want to see. Okay, top of the round. Rental loses initiative from the looks of it. Uh, He's still down to three units. One of them is legged. Uh, and then point blank range with two other mechs. He's going to need, uh, since he's a three, I think he only needs eights to stand up because it's plus five for losing a leg, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't know if that's worth it. And since he's only got one leg, I'm pretty sure he's down to minimum movement. So he cannot take advantage of careful stand and make that sixes. Uh, oh, looks like the Naginata's bailing on the objective since the Gladiator is now prone. Giving up rear armor, though. I don't know if that's the play. He is still armed. Yeah, Gladiator still has all of his weapons available. He's only going to have to give up one of those ER mediums to fire everything else uh, while prone. And I'm pretty sure that's rear arc on the Naginata. 
ballsy move from Lincoln, but he's apparently thinks he's got enough armor that he can take it. That's always a good call, trying to protect the side or something. Fresh back armor, here you go. Yeah, but the weapons that uh, that gladiator can bring to bear uh, can penetrate if he doubles up on one of those torsos. Especially that plasma rifle. Lincoln is banking on, tis only a flesh wound. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he can hit the arm, which will go internal. Also, the or the left arm, the right arm, the legs are all perfectly fine. He needs to find a, a torso in the rear and double tap it to, and crit something juicy like ammo. Uh, that's going to give him, uh, uh, well, not only some good luck going his way, he needs to find the right torso because the left torso is completely devoid of ammo because he's shot it all. <laughs> so is it not, not only is it a torso, it has to be the right torso. I mean, center torso is nice and all. Uh, getting two engine crits or an engine and a gyro would be nice, but he also has more armor there, 14, which means he would probably have to hit with the plasma rifle in the center torso. Oh, the hot spot where the Caesar is just became active. Yeah, it, it came active at the end of last round, so he did get the score there. Oh, okay. So the way you have to play this objective is not knowing where it's going to show up uh, at the end of the round and hoping that you're in the right spot when it does show up to get the points. Uh, but he is scooching with that inner sphere standard battle armor. Uh, he is not safe. I do believe the Caesar can shoot at him with a number of weapons on that right side. But the Phoenix Hawk is jumping away to f probably stay away from that Caesar and double up on this objective just in case that Panther gets taken out by the Caesar. Okay, Storm Raider pulling back off the objective, giving himself some cover. If the Mauler wants, it can back up one and deny the cover, or it can just stay still and turn and blast him. I would probably just move the one hex in order to get rid of the cover. It'd be essentially the same target number, though. And the crab running around in circles in that poor gladiator. Oof. Considering the crab's been damaged a good bit, he might choose to unload on the crab on the front. The left side's not looking too good. He's only got one armor left in that left leg. There we go, Phoenix Hawk makes his filing check this turn. And the left leg is, well, it's front arc for the, for the crab there, so oh, it's not gonna matter. Well, a Storm Raider looking to snap that right torso off the mauler. Ooh, and the Naginata going for the Storm Raider. Partial cover needs eights. Okay, that's a little bit better. Inner Sphere going into, I do believe that is the side arc of the Caesar with the machine gun. I mean, two damage is two damage. Eventually, <laughs> you'll get through somewhere, hopefully. Maybe, if you have enough time and enough damage to make it. I will say there was one game where I think it was a Viking 2C where I swarmed it with some elementals and I did a swarm attack every single turn and I s never got any crits and I never went internal until the round ended because it just had so much armor. So yeah, I mean, plinking away at the Caesar is something and the Caesar is going to be firing onto that poor little Panther needing a six with the, oh no, I'm sorry. The Panther is firing at the Caesar needing a six with the ERPPC and a four or an eight with the streak four. Sorry. Now, does the Caesar ignore the buzzing little battle armor, or does it choose to try and eliminate them because they're in short range for a lot of the weapons? They do have improved stealth, if I'm not mistaken. No, maybe not. These are industry standard. Maybe they don't. I'm thinking of voids, which I just faced the other day. Them beautiful voids. <laughs> oh yeah, one of the more efficient battle armors out there. Okay, Mahler. Yeah, at the beginning, I didn't think so, funny enough. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, we're good. We're into the firing phase. 
There's the machine guns planking away at the Caesar. A uh, whole lot of armor still left. Naginata connects on the Storm Raider with two of those LRM 15s, uh, but a lot of the damage hits the right leg. Other than that, not much to write home about there. Mauler unloads into the Storm Raider as well, only chipping away, dealing minimal damage with five missiles. Right arm Storm Raider comes out of that pretty much intact. Uh, Panther, on the other hand, hits the Caesar with the Streak 4. It's just shaving away at the Caesar. And the Crab nails the Gladiator with everything. Two plasma rifles, an ER medium, an ER small, and still doesn't go internal anywhere. Although he's looking a little worse for wear. Uh, uh oh. And uh oh, here we go. Gladiator returning fire onto the crab. Goes internal on the left leg. No crit. Phoenix Hawk, on the other hand. Oh, where's that round report? Phoenix Hawk, on the other hand, nails. No, go back. No, give me the damage. Nails the gladiator with the snub nose. And the Caesar. Ooh, wait, no, stop. Let me see the damage. Go back. Something's destroyed. Oh, Caesar gets the left torso on the Phoenix Hawk and obliterates the Phoenix Hawk, destroyed by engine destruction. I'm no engine explosion, so he doesn't take out that Phoenix Hawk with him, uh, only rolling an 8 out of 10. Uh, but there you go. That's what you needed from uh, on rental side. You need to start eliminating these numbers. And the Storm Raider bonks the mauler on the right torso which is internal no crit though thankfully for him and the crab does kick the gladiator three armor remaining hardened mind you in the left torso so he's he's getting whittled down and he's slowly going to be uh eliminated at this rate we are into round 10 so we got five more rounds to go i don't know if rental can mathematically catch up with only three units on the board uh, and assuming that Lincoln is contesting and not just giving him up, giving up the uh, objectives. And Rental rolls a 12 and wins initiative this round for round 11. Okay, so we're down to still the same three mechs on Rental's side. The Caesar is standing strong. The Gladiator is looking worse for wear. And the Storm Raider is surprisingly surviving. <laughs> uh, Panther. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not the Panther that got destroyed. That was the Phoenix Hawk that was destroyed. The Panther is jumping away and bailing, trying to <laughs> flee from that brutal assault from the Caesar. And also probably trying to help out with getting rid of this Gladiator. He's giving up the North objective because he does have a lead and he can't afford to do so. The new objective came down in the southeast and is in no man's land. No one will be claiming that anytime soon because no one's got the speed to get there within the next two to three turns. Uh, Storm Raider getting into the rear of the Mauler. I don't know if that is where you want to be. That Mauler is fresh on the rear and has, well, it's either you go for the rear armor with the AC-10 and try to club or you go for the front, which has a ton of armor in the arms and the center torsos uh, and the left torso and hope you hit the right torso. Uh, I, I guess you go for the rear armor and hope you double up the same torso with the mace and the AC-10. The crab is oh. closing the distance. Uh oh, onto the Storm Raider. Doesn't like that the, <laughs> the Storm Raider is still up and walking around. Considering that the Gladiator is prone, they can kind of just walk away from it. It is still contesting that objective, though, because uh, it's not in force withdrawal currently. But it's also not active, so I think Lincoln just did a good play just by, eh, there's nothing there, and just continue on. Oh, yeah, he's got a bunch of LRMs. He may as well utilize them to pick them off from afar. Uh, like he did with that uh, hammer that he destroyed with the ERPPC on the Panther. Eventually, he'll whittle him down and take him out. If the Storm Raider could make it to the four o'clock one, but that crab is clear and present danger. It's and that, gonna, and it's not gonna allow it to. No, that crab is also faster than <laughs> the Storm Raider is at seven eleven oh, base movement speed. Yeah. 
So he's not going to win the foot race against the uh, against the crab. That poor little storm reader is only six nine. This turn might spell the end, the doom for that storm raider. Yeah, this one I think might be where uh, it becomes unrecoverable for him. Uh, with only mm -hmm. two mechs left on the board, uh, he needed a hit with those punches earlier on the Naginata and bonk the head. That would have given him a huge advantage on the west side of the map. Uh, and he makes the supercharger roll. Unfortunately, the dice said no and just bonked torsos and arms, which is not what he wanted to see with those 12 damage punches. Jesse, I'm going to have to head out in the next five minutes. All good. No worries. Uh, thanks for joining me while you were here. I appreciate it, man. No worries. I'm glad to be here. It was nice. Okay, there it is. Panther under the rear of the gladiator. I'm not sure how that rear armor is looking. Let's take a look. Uh, oh, no, he's already been nailed in the rear a good bit, so he can do some real damage there. Even though his front isn't looking much better. Um, what is this to hit number from the Caesar? 11s with a snub nose. Ooh, not ideal. I'm curious why I didn't fire the Gauss rifle. Okay, here we go. Firing. Crab nails the Storm Raider with a plasma rifle and an ER medium. Crits out an arm. Uh, destroys the right arm, I should say. And then goes and turn on the right torso for two engine crits. The Storm Raider is now in force. Withdrawal at minimum. Uh, Gladiator gets unloaded on by the Panther and goes internal on the right torso rear. and Crits out his SRM4. The Naginata unloads and destroys the right torso. Destroying the Storm Raider. Fortunately, the Storm Raider goes up with a fourth engine hit and blows up on the Mauler for another 21 points of damage. Unfortunately, all that damage hits armor, uh, strips away the rear torso of the armor of the of the Mauler on the right rear torso. But I don't think that's going to matter after this turn. Uh, another LRM connects on the Storm Raider. He's already dead, so now he's double dead. And there's where the Goss Rifle went into the Naginata. 15 damage on the left torso. Goes internal. No crit, though. And the Stub Nose does nail the uh, Panther, but doesn't take him out. Uh, Gladiator. Uh, yeah, Mauler hits the Gladiator with some LRM 15s. Just shaving away at the armor. Even less armor is there now. And the AC-10 from the Storm Raider misses the Crab. Oof. Muller makes his PSR on sixes from the 21 damage from the explosion. Into round 12 and Lincoln wins initiative again. So, yeah, that pretty much spells the end for Rental's uh, prospects of winning the objective. He still has four rounds of firing with that Caesar to try and clean up some of these mechs. He can probably take out the Naginata, maybe the Mauler and or the Crab. Uh, I don't see that Gladiator living past another round or two. Speaking of which, the Gladiator is missing his left arm, uh, so he can no longer one arm prone fire. Oh no, he can. He does have the right arm, so he can one arm prone fire, but he's only got the plasma rifle in that right arm. So he's down to an SRM4 and two ER smalls, which don't have the best range. And he's facing an odd direction. If he turns, he can try and get some shots on the Naginata. Uh, as it stands now, it's not looking good for him. Not at all. He's mostly combat ineffective with just an SRM4 and two ER smalls on that gladiator left over. I don't think he can stand up, missing an arm and a leg. Yeah, he's... Oh, he tried to stand there, apparently. Took some more damage. Uh, now he's red in multiple locations. One armor left on the left torso. One armor left on the left leg. Ugh. Definitely not long for this route. For this round. Yep, there's the fall. No crits, thankfully. That, uh, hardened armor coming into play, though. At this rate, at the end of this round, I think it's going to be the Caesar versus the world. And, uh... I wouldn't count the Caesar out. He's still fully operational, fully functional. Uh, he's got these little Intersphere Standard Battle Armor 
poking and prodding him, but uh, he's still in this. Completely dangerous, uh, as he was as turn one. Okay, there goes the Mauler into the Gladiator. Needs sevens with those LRMs and a six on the LB10. There's not much armor there left, so those clusters are more than likely going to go uh, internal and fish for crits. Uh, ER, PPC, and LRMs need tens onto the Caesar. Right, what are we doing with the Gladiator? What are we doing with the Caesar? What do you got? The Gladiator may not have range on anything. Okay, Mauler nails the Gladiator, uh, goes internal on the left torso, LB10's hit, internal on the left torso, doesn't destroy it, he's still there, loses the Prasma Rifle. Battle Armor, go for the leg attack, do not get the crit, but they do whittle down that right leg armor a little bit more. Uh, Naginata whiffs everything at the Caesar. Take a look at the round report still. Uh, ooh. Wait, hang on. Let me see the weapon attack phase. There we go. Ow, stop it. Okay. And the panther unloads in the gladiator's rear. Uh, it goes internal on the left leg. Internal on the left torso. Crits out a hip, upper leg. Oh, man, he's losing the heat sinks and jump jets left and right. Four structure remaining on that left torso. A weapons fire for the Caesar nails the Mauler with the Goss rifle in the right arm, not where you want to hit him. And the kick from the Panther destroys the left torso of the Gladiator. Uh, Gladiator's still there, but only just barely. And the Caesar whiffs the kick onto the Inner Sphere Standard Battle Armor. He did sevens, rolled a five. Oof, tough luck. But he remains standing, so at least he's still there. Falling over would not be good for the Caesar. Round 12 uh, is over. We're going into round 13. So it's 13, 14, and then 15. It's all going to come down to uh, the Caesar, what the Caesar can do. He's contest on the objectives. He's not getting any objectives as long as those Inner Sphere Standard Battle Armor remain in that area, which they should. Uh, in Ideally, the crab can run to one of these other locations and start racking up more objective score. Uh, probably the six o'clock one. Uh, the Naginata may be heading to the north at the 12 o'clock to try and get objectives there. The Mauler might do the same as well to rack up another 15 points uh, by the time the game closes out. Uh, the Panther is probably going to stick around and execute that poor little gladiator. He's got. 13 left <laughs> left left and uh, left torso internals 18 center torso internals oh man i thought he lost a torso that's strange there it is okay it didn't update for some reason yeah the left torso is gone he's got 11 left on the right torso and 18 in the center torso there is some armor in the front but i'm pretty sure the panther is going to go through the rear uh, the objectives have pretty much been decided at this point. Uh, it's now to see whether or not the Caesar can kill the Naginata and or the Mauler and at least recoup some of that objective score and or the Crab, who is perilously close to that uh, Caesar. Surprisingly close. I would have thought he would have gone for some more objective score, but I think he's going for combat at this point. Oh, yep, and there's the Panther in the rear of the Gladiator's armor there. Oh, Gladiator tried to stand up and took more damage to the center torso rear. Only 12 structure remaining. And the second pilot hit. So, firing phase. I'm pretty sure the Mauler, Naginata, and Crab are all unloading onto the Caesar. The only question is, uh, who is the Caesar going to shoot at? Is he going to shoot at the Crab with a plus 4 TMM? Uh, the Naginata or the Mauler that are both in heavy damage. Uh, Naginata is only exposed to the left torso. The rest of the armor is intact except for that left arm which only has one armor remaining. 
uh, and the crab nails him with two plasma rifles for a total of eight heat between the two of them. Panther destroys the left leg of the gladiator, and there we go. Gets the center torso destruction uh, by another crit on the engine on the CT and a crit on the XL gyro. Uh, but completely cores out the mech. Naginata, on the other hand, fires into the Caesar, uh, shaving away, misses with two of the three LRM, or two of the four LRM. No, not, no, two of the three LRMs and connects with the RPPC. Mauler connects with the LB10. Uh, whoa, here we go. Caesar misses with the Gauss rifle, connects. Whoa, 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 go back, go back. There we go. Okay, that's there. Okay, connects with the snub nose, destroys the left torso, it composite internal structure, takes double damage, limb blown off, two damage transfers to the CT, critically on engine. Engine has taken six hits this phase because it's a double XL, that's right. Rolls, so he's destroyed. That one, destroying that one torso took out the crab. So surprisingly fragile, wow, okay. So crab is done, one down. Two more to go for the Caesar. We'll see if he can pull it off. Uh, Objective-wise, though, uh, it is still 45 to 60. Rental creeping up that objective score. Now only 15 behind Mech Warrior Lincoln. I think maybe mathematically, unless Lincoln moves the Mech. Well, he's only got three left. Unless he moves the Panther onto an objective, or the Mauler, or the Naginata. <sighs> I think the Caesar can come back. Oh, never mind. There's the Intersphere Standard contesting. So he's now not no longer counting up. Scratch that. Yep. Lincoln still has four units left. Let's see how much damage the Caesar can do before either the end of the game or it goes down. How's it looking in armor? Four left on the left torso, which means eight. And... 13 on the right torso, which means 26. It's looking okay, uh, other than that left torso. So depending on the groupings and the hit locations, this Caesar could go the distance. He is at 9 heat because of that plasma rifle, so he won't be able to fire everything that it wants to. But it's still firing that Goss rifle every turn. Uh, and probably that snub nose PPC or those ER mediums. And the Goss rifle is a head capper, so he's still got a chance to take out mechs every turn. Uh, Naginata nails the right leg. Uh, no crit on the left torso because of the hardened armor effect. Minus two. Would have been a crit there. Denied. Oh, and he goes for the swarm with the Intersphere Standard Battle Armor. Uh, I don't think you care if you're the Caesar, honestly. Uh, ERPPC misses, Caesar misses with the Gauss Rifle, misses with the Snub Nose. Mauler, on the other hand, hits and actually nails that left torso and goes internal. That's what we were worried about. Critical hit on the Gauss Rifle ammo. Oh, not good. Let's zoom in and take a look. He is now currently swarmed. Let's see what's going on with that ground report. So yeah, takes out one of those Goss rifle ammo tons. This is this was turn 14, so he's literally only got one more turn left. Uh, wait, no, we're not done. Let's take a look what else happens. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, goes internal on the left torso again. No crit. Takes one piloting hit. Uh, he's okay, though. Zero armor remaining. Wait a minute, what are we doing here? Oh, it's the LB-10s. They nail the Caesar and they hit the swarming infantry. Okay, I see. That's why you always want to swarm last. And physical attacks, he tries to brush off, misses, and takes seven damage to the right arm. Three armor remaining there. Ouch. I mean, you may as well go for the brush off uh, if you can. But honestly, I'm not too worried about eight machine gun damage unless it hits that left torso. Anywhere else on the mech and you're fine, except for the right arm and the left torso, because the right arm's now down to three armor. Oh, not looking good. 
And if I'm not mistaken, this is the last round. Uh, round 14 heat phase, so we're going into round 15. Okay, going into turn 15. Looks like Rental loses initiative, so he's not really... I mean, at, at this point, it doesn't really matter. He's likely not moving. Lamaginata, Mauler, and Panther are either going to move closer or just not move. Okay, it looks like the Panther moved up. The Caesar did not move. The Naginata and the Mauler also did not move. So it's going to be a Mexican standoff here. Uh, Panther is the only one encroaching. I don't know if he's going to want to shoot at the Panther or the Naginata or the Mauler. The Panther is probably easier pickings than either the Naginata or the Mauler. Uh, Mauler is only exposed in the right torso. Naginata is only exposed in the left torso. Panther, on the other hand, has five armor or five structure left on the left torso. Is it an XL engine? No, it's not. Uh, there is armor or ammo there, but it's case two, so not even really worth it there. Uh, but you're more likely to core them out, or you're just as likely to headshot any of them. So. At this point, uh, I don't think it matters. Honestly, you're you're hoping for hitting the proper torso and destroying a mech outright uh, by through armor through ammo explosions. Which on the left torso on the Naginata, there isn't even ammo left there. So what about the Mauler? Uh, there's LB10 ammo there and some LRM ammo. So you, I guess, I would go for the Mauler. Uh, Roll high, hit the right torso, and blow them up through ammo explosions. Yeah, not no easy shots, no easy kills. Especially considering uh, his Goss ammo got critted out. Oh, there's the XL Gyro. On the automatic crit, he rolled a 12, minus 2, 2 locations, and double crits the XL Gyro. That does put him in force withdrawal at the very last turn, at bare minimum, depending on what else happens. Uh, one of the troopers is killed by the ERPPC shot by the Naginata. Another trooper has two armor remaining. Uh, critical hit on the right hand. Another head hit. We're looking to see if the Caesar survives. I'm seeing some crit chances. Another head hit. Uh, if he goes unconscious, he does go unconscious. Oof. Critical hit on a rear mounted medium laser. So he is in force withdrawal uh, twice because he's got four head hits and because he lost his gyro. <laughs> An absolutely brutal round for the Caesar. Uh, none of his shots, which fi he fired at the Panther, uh, really did anything to write home without. Okay, so uh, as Nitro and I mentioned at the beginning, this was an uphill battle for rental. Uh, and Mech Warrior Lincoln was the favorite to win it overall. I will say Lincoln played it well. I think Rental had a solid chance there in the mid game to take it. Uh, if one of those punches would have nailed that Naginata in the head, this would have been a completely different game. He had four uh, different chances. One of those punches missed. The three that hit, neither of the three rolled the head hit. Uh, they all hit arms or torsos, which is unfortunate. Uh, that just goes to show you that even though you have a disadvantage, you still have a chance. And never give up until the last round. He had a solid chance of, well, not really a high chance, but he had a decent chance of critting out either the Mauler or the Naginata or maybe even the Panther if he got lucky enough and hit the head a couple of times. Uh, you never want to give up until the game is over. And... Uh, it's definitely over now at the end of turn 15. Rental put up a good showing uh, starting this match on the back foot. Even the objectives went Lincoln's way. If the first one would have spawned on his side, uh, it could have been a completely different match. The objective score was very close at the end. I want to say either 45 or 50 to 60. So it was not an easy fight for Lincoln. He definitely played it well, uh, contested objectives, maybe not enough in my opinion. Uh, with those inner sphere standard battle armor, he could have just been permanently uh, one hex away from that Caesar contesting these objectives and forcing him to either fire at him and leave his mechs alone 
or just denying him those five points every turn. Uh, but with that being said, Rental made the best of a bad hand and made it a really close game. Uh, well played to both of them, and I hope to see more games out of them in the future. GG's, guys. Uh, and keep playing Mega Mech. Good night, everybody.